Hello everyone, I am Mank and welcome to today's video where we will be talking about LLM benchmarks. Tools used to test and measure how well large language models like GPT and Google Gemini performs. If you have ever wondered how AI models are evaluated, this video will explain it in simple terms. LLM benchmarks are used to check how good these models are at tasks like coding, answering questions and translating languages or summarizing text. These tests use sample data and specific measurement to see how well the model perform. For example, the model might be tested with a few examples like few short learning or none at all like zero short learning to see how it handles new tasks. So now the question arises why are these benchmarks important? They help developers understand where a model is strong and where it needs improvement. They also make it easier to compare different models helping people choose the best one for their needs. However, LLM benchmarks do have some limits. They don't always predict how well a model will work in real world situation. And sometimes model can overfit, meaning they perform well on test data but struggle in practical use. We will also cover how LLM leaderboards rank different model based on their benchmark scores, giving us a clear picture of which models are performing the best. So stay tuned as we dive into how LLM benchmarks work and why they are so important for advancing AI. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before we start, here is a quick info for you. Dive into the future of AI with our generative AI and machine learning course in collaboration with ENICT Academy, IIT Guwahati. Learns tools like ChatGPT, OpenAI, Hugging Face, Python, and more. Join masterclass led by IIT Guwahati faculty, engage in hands on projects, and earn executive alumni status. This generative AI and machine learning course enriches your career journey with comprehensive coverage of machine learning, deep learning, NLP, generative AI, reinforcement learning, computer vision, and many more. So don't forget to find the course link from the description box below and the pinned comment. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what are LLM benchmarks? LLM benchmarks are standardized tools used to evaluate the performance of large language models. They provide a structured way to test LLMs on a specific task or question using sample data and predefined metrics to measure their capabilities. These benchmarks assess various skills such as coding, common sense reasoning, and NLP tasks like machine translation, question answering, and text summarization. The importance of LLM benchmark lies in their role in advancing model development. They track the progress of an LLM offering quantitative insights into where the model performs well and where improvement is needed. This feedback is crucial for guiding the fine-tuning process allowing researchers and developers to enhance model performance. Additionally, Benchmarks offers an objective comparison between different LLMs, helping developers and organizations choose the best model for their needs. So how LLM benchmarks work? LLM benchmarks follow a clear and systematic process. They present a task for LLM to complete, evaluate its performance using specific metrics, and assign a score based on how well the model performs. So here is a breakdown of how this process works. The first one is setup. LLM benchmarks come with pre-prepared sample data, including coding challenges, long documents, math problem, and real-world conversation. The task span various areas like common sense reasoning, problem solving, question answering, summary generation, and translation, all present to the model at the start of testing. The second step is testing. The model is tested on one of the three ways. Few short, the LLM is provided with a few examples before being prompted to complete a task, demonstrating its ability to learn from limited data. The second one is zero short. The model is asked to perform a task without any prior examples, testing its ability to understand new concepts and adapt to unfamiliar scenarios. The third one is fine tuned. The model is trained on a dataset similar to the one used in the benchmark aiming to enhance its performance on the specific task involved. The third step is the scoring. So after completing the task, the benchmark compares the model's output with the expected answer and generates a score, typically ranging from 0 to 100, reflecting how accurately the LLM performs. So now let's move forward, let's see key metrics for benchmarking LLMs. So LLM's benchmark uses various metrics to assess the performance of large language model. So here are some commonly used metrics. The first one is accuracy or precision. Measure the percentage of correct prediction made by the model. The second one is recall. Also known as sensitivity, measure the number of true positive reflecting the correct prediction made by the model. The third one is F1 score. 
combines both accuracy and recall into a single metric, weighing them equally to address any false positive or negatives. F1 score ranging from 0 to 1, where 1 indicates perfect precision and recall. The fourth one is exact match. Tracks the percentage of predictions that exactly match the correct answer, which is especially used for the tasks like translation and question answering. The fifth one is perplexity gauges. Here it will tell you how well a model predicts the next word or token. A lower perplexity score indicates better task comprehension by the model. The sixth one is BLUE, Bilingual Evaluation Understudy. It is used for evaluating machine translation by comparing n-grams, sequence of adjacent text elements between the model's output and the human produced translation. So these quantitative metrics are often combined for more through evaluation. So in addition, human evaluation introduces qualitatively factors like coherence, relevance, and semantic meaning, provide a nuanced assessment. However, human evaluation can be time consuming and subjective, making a balance between quantitative and qualitative measures important for comprehensive evaluation. So now let's moving forward, see some limitation of LLM benchmarking. While LLM benchmarking are valuable for assessing model performance, they have several limitations that prevents them from the fully predicting real world effectiveness. So here are some few. The first one is bounded scoring. Once a model achieves the highest possible scores on the benchmark, that benchmark loses its utility and must be updated with more challenging tasks to remain a meaningful assessment tool. The second one is broad data set. LLM benchmark often rely on sample data from diverse subject and task. So this wide scope may not effectively evaluate a model's performance in edge cases, specialized fields or specific use cases where more tailored data would be needed. The third one is finite assessment. Benchmark only tests a model's current skills and as LLMs evolve and new capabilities emerge, new benchmarks must be created to measure these advancements. The fourth one is overfitting. So if an LLM is trained on the same data used for benchmarking, it can be lead to overfitting where the model performs well on the test data but struggles with the real task. So this result is scores that don't truly really represent the model's broader capabilities. So now what are LLM leaderboards? So LLM leaderboards publish a ranking of LLMs based on the variety of benchmarks. Leaderboards provide a way to keep track to the myriad LLMs and they compare their performance. LLM leaderboards are especially beneficial in making decisions on which models to use. So here are some. So in this you can see here OpenAI is leading and GPT-4 second and the LAMA third with 405 parameter B and 3.5 sonnet is there. So this is best in multitask reasoning. What about the best in coding? So here OpenAI O1 is leading. I guess this is the Orion one and the second one is 3.5 sonnet and after that in the third position there is GPT-4. So this is in best in coding. So next comes fastest and most affordable models. So fastest models are LAMA 8B parameter, 8B parameter. And the second one is LLAMA LAMA 70B. And the third one is 1.5 flash. This is Gemini one. And lowest latency. And here it is leading LAMA again. In cheapest models, again, LAMA 8B is leading. And in the second number, we have Gemini flash 1.5. And in third, we have GPT-40 mini. Moving forward, let's see standard benchmarks between Cloud3 Opus and GPT-4. So in general, they are equal. In reasoning, Cloud3 Opus is leading. And in coding, GPT-4 is leading. In math, again, GPT-4 is leading. In tool use, Cloud3 Opus is leading. And in multilingual, Cloud3 Opus is leading. So with this, we have come to end of this video. If you have any question or doubt, Please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Our team of experts will help you as soon as possible. Thank you and keep learning with Simply Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.